it's it's always fun. It's a group of people we worked with now for going on 10 years. So we all go off, we do other projects, and then to come back together and tell another story of Poe, it's always great to be with everyone, see everyone, and then work with them for another three to four years. I think we knew creatively there was more to tell. We didn't know if we'd be lucky enough to get the chance to do it. I mean, we, we, I guess we hoped. Um, Although in the early days, Jeffrey was always very clear about wanting to aim high and, and, and try to think of stories that could support kind of the epic scope of a, of a story being told over multiple movies. But when you're making that first movie, you're so busy making that first movie, you can't even imagine uh, getting to tell more. We're just lucky we did. A lot of it comes from Jack and his personality, the way he's a big movie star, a celebrity, but at heart, he still wants to do his best. There's still that that vulnerability that he brings to the character. And it was once we tapped into that and added that to the kung fu genre that the character really kind of came to life. From a storytelling perspective, the worlds kind of keep getting bigger and bigger. But aside from that with Poe, what we discovered is that he's a character who's constantly asking, who am I? And he's on an identity quest. And what's nice is just as he thinks he knows who he is, things around him change and he has no idea again who he is. It was hard to know exactly how to approach the dad and we tried a lot of different routes. We tried a more serious fellow who was the opposite of Poe, but then Brian Cranston came aboard and we decided not to go the Walter White evil version, but instead to bring in the, the side, the, I guess the Malcolm in the middle, Brian Cranston, and to think, well, what if Poe's dad were a lot like Poe, and he was also enthusiastic and a little bit of the clumsy and a little more of a natural panda so that Poe realizes that maybe some of his kung fu is away from what a natural panda would be. Well, as you can imagine, the, the man who raised Poe since he was a baby would be very threatened to have another father come into Poe's life, especially he's a, a father who looks like Poe. So the, the, I think in the trail you can see the comedy involved in two pandas and a, and a little goose, and and how do you know he's your father, which is like the seminal joke of the whole movie. Uh, so he'd be really, really threatened until at a certain point in the movie he realized that what's really important is when you love someone is for that person to be loved as much as possible by as many people as possible. So he, he makes the transition from threatened to embracing and knowing that what's best for Poe is to have as much love as possible in his life. Well, what Poe learns is that a bad guy is coming and he can only be stopped by a true master of chi. And chi, the chi techniques and the secret chi technique are something that pandas apparently once knew. So Poe's father says, if you come back with me to the village, I can teach this technique to you. But the only way you're going to learn it is if you truly embrace your pandaness and you must learn what it is to be a panda three movies in, we not only know uh, these characters that we've written for three times, but we know how these very talented actors would portray these characters. So everything they've brought to the characters is kind of in our toolbox, too, when we sit down to write. That's, that's been a real joy. Well, the, the villain of the first movie was Tai Long, and he was the biggest, baddest, strongest, mess, menacing villain ever. We didn't think we could top that. For, so for the second movie, we made the villain, uh, the peacock, Lord Shen, and he was a more intellectual, scheming villain. And now when we sit down for this third movie, we think, how do we, what new category is there? Uh, he's not going to be physically menacing. He's not going to be intellectually menacing. Uh, the supernatural element really, really opened things up for us because it also gave him a connection to Ugwe and to pandas from hundreds of years ago. It really, it really seemed like a nice kind of unifying concept that would give this, this villain uh, even a grander scope without having to make him, I mean, he's big and strong and smart, but the supernatural thing is, is, is certainly new. It's also a type of kung fu movie world where fans of kung fu movies and everyone working on the production loves kung fu movies. And there's so many of those great movies that have that supernatural element, whether it's, it's House of Flying Daggers. And Chinese uh, ghost story. Ghost story. So to be able to pull that in, it's one more part of the genre that we love so much. To have the creative shorthand with them and to know that when Jen raises her hand like this, that she's going to go off and draw something, it just makes it so much easier. And to also know the characters so well. Poe 
is the thing that drives everything. So in any situation, you're not necessarily saying, what does the movie need at this point? You're thinking, what would the character of Poe do at this point? And we all may have slightly different perspectives of what Poe might do, but that's what makes him kind of this well-rounded character is that he has elements of everyone who's working on it and thinking, well, what would you do in this situation? How would you approach it? And you start arguing and discussing and debating and out of all that, the movie comes together. The point is that no one making this movie was ever complacent and said, well, let's just do what we did before because people already like it. And that goes top down, all the production design, Ramon, everything he did and all the animators, all the, all the art, the music, everything was to say, well, we've already done that. What can we do that will not necessarily top it, but challenge us to do something beyond what we've done already? But then our job is to take that and say, okay, scene by scene, how would this start to lay out as a movie? Who would the new characters be? How will the Furious Five have their roles? And that's just in the beginning. That's before you get to now we go off and write a script for a couple months and then come back and present it. Then it starts getting drawn, then it starts getting redone, and then it's two and a half to three years later and you're still rewriting stuff. And as proof, I can't even really remember where we started because you, it's, a, it's such a meandering, wandering path to where you final, finally get.